stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. One of the most ferocious fanatics in U.S. military history was the Indian war chief, Crazy Horse. When all other chiefs surrendered after the Great Sioux Rebellion of the 70s, he alone continued to defy the army, a desperate outlaw to red men as well as white. my daughter. She has the red sickness that kills. White man's sickness. Only white man's doctor can cure this. Has pale face God entered your heart and turned you away from great spirit? I am thinking only to save our child. That is medicine man work. I will tell. No. No, Tasunke. The trip is too much. If you move her, she will die. We could live together at peace, like a family should. Please, Tasunke, make your peace with the white soldiers. Join your friends, the other chiefs at the agency. I bring medicine man here. That day in March 1877, I was reporting to the quarters of the Sioux Nation with my friend Joe Weaver, the Indian agent. I'm Matt Clark, railroad detective. Everybody connected with the Army or the law was out trying to locate Chief Crazy Horse. Didn't have a lead until we learned that Crazy Horse's wife had brought their sick child into the agency. It was my idea to have Frankie Adams, another railroad operative, assigned to the case as one of the nurses. Joe, where would they have Crazy Horse's wife and sick baby? That building next door is the infirmary. They'd likely be there. Yeah. Tell the Major I'll see him in a few minutes. I see you're right on the job, Frankie. Yeah, but this time I don't like it. Are you the doctor? Sorry. Looks bad. If she'd only brought her a couple of days earlier. Where's the doctor? We sent for him. He should arrive tonight. Well, you got yourself pretty involved, didn't you, Frankie? How can you help it? Cute little black-eyed baby like that. What about the mother? Doesn't she think Crazy Horse should be here? She doesn't know where he is. You mean she isn't telling? 
I mean, I honestly think she doesn't know. Better keep your heart out of your work, Frankie. It'll be much easier for you. In case you want me, I'll be close to the Major. Take care of your horse, Doctor. The infirmary's right back there. Well, I got the doctor here safe and sound. He's on his way over to the infirmary now. Good, I just left there. The kid's pretty sick. You know, I got a feeling that Crazy Horse is not so far away. He's very fond of that little girl. Come now, are you trying to tell me that savage has a sentimental attachment to his family? The trouble with you army men, you think no one has any more feelings than yourself. Indians hate us, Major, not their own people. Next, you'll be telling me he attends church on Sundays. As a matter of fact, he is religious. In his Indian way, of course. He's a mystic. He has visions like a regular old-time saint. Claims he dreamed that no white man's bullet could ever kill him. A fatalist, huh? And this is what the general expects me to deliver alive. Mac. I just found the doctor on the steps with an arrow on his back. Lady. Yes? My baby is dead. If the doctor had gotten to the child, we felt she still would have been alive. We were sure it was Crazy Horse who had killed him. It was his hatred of white man's medicine that drove him to it. Major Digby took his entire company out on an extended search for the insane Indian, determined to stay out at this time until they got him. I stayed behind with Joe Weaver. As an expert on Indians, it was his hunch that the crazed chief would try to visit his daughter's grave. Joe was sure that if the Indian came back at all, he would be alone. Uh, do you think that Indian will ever show up? This is the third night. We'll give him one more night and then give it up as a bad hunch. Yeah. Yeah, you take over for a while. Time to get around back of him. You take care of him on this side. Oh, crazy horse! I've got a rifle pointing right at your head. And I've got one pointing. I don't go in soldiers' guardhouse. Most likely not. But General Crook wants to talk with you. I have no words for Grey Fox. 
He no friend. You're wrong, Chief. He wants to be your friend, just like he is to all the other Chiefs. They are cowards. They are afraid to die quick, like men. They want to die slow, like old women. They're thinking of their old women, their young women, and their children. I think of my girl. White man's sickness killed her. If you hadn't murdered the doctor, she might have been all right. But no, you think only about yourself and that great pride of yours. Will Gray Fox let us hunt buffalo before winter? The buffalo are vanishing. You must find a new way of life. We'll give you cattle and horses and teach you how to live. War is a job of young men. They learn by stealing horses. We don't honor white men for stealing horses. We hang up. You see why it is no good for me to talk to Gray Fox. His words and my words will be like crows and sparrows flying in the air. They will never fly together. When I meet Gray Fox, it will be to kill him, not to talk with him. Them's big words, crazy horse. Let's see if you talk that big when you meet the general. He's coming in on the next train. Let's get back to the agency, Joe. Where's your horse? Stalking him had taken the better part of the night. It was dawn when we left the burial ground. We came down the canyon toward the agency with our valuable prize. We should have known he wouldn't sell himself so cheaply. in my sights and I couldn't have missed. They kept us pinned until Crazy Horse was in the clear, then left us suddenly as they had struck. He couldn't have missed. You believe that stuff about him being bulletproof? Take a look at that. Firing pin hit the cap dead center and didn't go off. Now what do you think? Lady. Good morning. I am troubled. Is it about your husband? I've told you many times. If there's anything you know, it's best to tell us. To avoid more suffering. That I feel, too. That is why I must tell you he was here last night. Here? He say white man's sickness killed the little one. For her, he will kill the white chief. Do not let him do this, lady. Soldiers must stop him. I do not want him dead. I want him here, alive. Then you must tell me everything you know. What is this about the general? If I tell, you promise me that the soldiers will bring him to me alive? I promise you I'll do everything I can. The great chief comes by train. My husband will attack when trains stop in little hills to drink water. There are innocent people on that train, women and children. And with the army better than 50 miles away, we've got to do something. First off, Joe, do you believe this story? If it was any other Indian, I'd have my doubts. But you heard him the other night. He swore he'd get the general, and you ought to know by now he's no bluff. Did she say anything else, Frankie? No, but the train will be here in a few hours. All right, then, Joe. How well do you know your peaceful Indians? Chiefs like touch the clouds, little big man, Hawkeye and Spotted Tail. I trust them. They're men of their word. But to send them on the warpath against their own brothers. Well, if they don't know it by now, somebody ought to tell them. The crazy horse is just as bad for them as he is for us. If the general is killed, even the reservation won't protect them. You know that. Sure, I know it, but who's going to convince them? I'll take a crack at it. If I can convince them, I'll lead them. But we've got to have guns. That's out. 
Do you know what would happen to you and the rest of us if this turned general uprising? I know. But you said you trusted the peaceful chiefs. We'll take your word for it, Joe. All right. If you're willing to risk your life, I'm willing to risk my job. I'll call a powwow. Frankie, you run out and meet the Major and hurry him along. Tell him we're sitting on a powder keg here and the Indians are holding all the matches. Matt, I promised Crazy Horse's wife you'd bring him in alive. Still got your heart in your work, haven't you? Beat it. I talked for what seemed like hours, giving him every possible argument. And you knew that you would be wiped out just like you wiped out Custer. And you knew that it was time to quit and make an honest peace. And so far, you've had peace. But I'm telling you now that if you let Crazy Horse attack this train, every white man in this country will cry for your blood. So think, think hard before you cast your vote. Think about the future of your sons and your daughters. because they were with me even before I started. one Indian. If I could get him, the fight would be over. With the force of the charge, Crazy Horse's band was broken and scattered. Then I saw the man I wanted.
kill me. Not yet. I'm saving you for the general. What will Gray Fox do to me? After what you tried to do to him, what do you expect? Guard house. That's up to the army now. They're in charge. Then I die. Now, wait. You're a great and powerful war chief, Crazy Horse. You'll be treated just like any other surrendering officer. You come with me willingly and cause me to more trouble. And I'll give you my word that you won't be locked up. You've been a brave warrior. Only a coward would ever think of taking his own life. This was a solemn occasion in Indian history. The government's future relations with the Sioux Nation would depend on the treatment of Chief Crazy Horse. We would have to be firm with him, yet fair. Lightning alive and not even tied. Major showed up yet, Joe? Inside. With the general? The troops went out to escort him in. They haven't got back yet. Uh oh. I'll go tell the major. Good job, Clark. Risky, but still a good job. Where's the prisoner? Outside. We'll put him in the guardhouse. You can't do that. I gave Crazy Horse my word he wouldn't be locked up, and that he would talk with the general. The general isn't here yet. Besides, you didn't have the authority to make such a promise. With my impression, those were standing orders. I've had countermanding orders direct from department. And even if these orders are unfair or downright stupid, I'm here to carry them out. But I gave my word to Crazy Horse. Well, as long as you're so squeamish about the feeling of your Indian friends, I'll put him in the guardhouse myself. Guard. Guard. Get down. Take him off his horse. It's all right, men. We're going to put him in the guardhouse to keep him safe. Come on. Bring him on. Open the door. Soldier, I have come in. There will be no more war. Sorry it had to be like this, Chief. It is good this way. It is what I wanted. I am going to my people. I will truly be at peace. Horse looked for death today, and death has found him.
That was at 11 o'clock on the 5th of September, 1877, the old Sioux Agency in Nebraska Territory. <laughs> 